it wasn't until I uh, heard myself on an audio recording. I think it was on a video. Um, someone had come over to the house. This is back in the back in the uh, either the late '90s, probably yeah, late '90s. I was uh, I was a teenager, and I was messing around with a with a camcorder. Remember those old school uh, camcorders that put the put the videotape in and and um, you know it, it was like a big VCR. <laughs> anyway, so I messed around, I was doing some video in my in my neighborhood, and then uh, I went back in, put it in the in the VHS and then I uh, I heard myself on the tape and I was like wow that's how I sound um, what I want to talk about in this video is um, people who are ashamed for uh, ashamed of speaking properly um, so we have those people who were who were raised in the in the urban communities, you know, raised in the black community, and they sound a certain way. Now, what I've realized is, just travel around the country, travel around the world. I've lived overseas, uh, lived in different states outside of California, um, and uh, where I live now and where I grew up. Um, and what you realize is, is that people can sound differently in different cities. Like literally I live in the IE and there are people in Orange County who sound a lot different than what people in the, how people in the IE sound. Uh, there are people in LA who sound a lot different than people in the IE. So, uh, and then up North and then Central Valley is people sound different everywhere you go. Um, and the same is true for uh, African Americans, uh, blacks who who grow up outside of the urban community. Um, what I'm realizing is there are people, and I've heard, I've I've seen the comments. I've talked to these people. I've, I've talked to friends, uh, people who were who were raised outside of the black community in the suburbs, they, uh, uh, forgive me guys, I'm going to be multitasking here. Um, they, just taking care of some work, they, they sound different. And there's a, there's a reason why they sound different because they weren't raised in that community. So black people who come from the suburbs, what's happening is a lot of times, black people who come from the suburbs, they realize they they sound different. So they, in order to try to identify with blacks who who are from the, who live in the inner city, they try to code switch. Okay, uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, if you're black and if you're different, let's say you come from uh, Africa, uh, African Americans have historically made fun of Africans who come over for the way they sound, the way they talk, the way they dress, the way they behave, everything. They pick on them. They bully them. Everybody knows this. Um, I know someone personally who is extremely sensitive about uh, her southern dialect, her accent. And there's nothing wrong with her accent, but she lives out in the West now, and she she's feels extremely insecure about it, and it's it's really it's really um, she doesn't have to feel that way. She sounds she sounds fine, her, her accent sounds fine, but what happens is is because you're from a different area or a different place, people people notice the differences and they make fun they can make fun of you or or consider you an outsider. So. Because you don't want to be an outsider, you you try to fit in and you do anything to fit in. And and what you'll do is you'll you'll try to change your accent, try to try to blend in and 
So the same, it's it, so talking about this uh, difference between black black Americans who come from the inner city uh, versus black Americans who come from the suburbs. When you're in the suburbs, you tend to sound like the people in the suburban in the suburban community. You sound like you you tend to sound like the neutral accents or the accents around you. So, uh, yeah, you're not going to sound like the blacks in the urban community, uh, which a lot of times they sound. You know, there's there's differences. There's there's there are blacks in the urban community who sound fine. They sound normal, respectable like normal, respectable people. And then there are black people in the urban community who sound, honestly, they sound like, like criminals or, you know, street, um, uh, uneducated, uh, thug. Um, I've, you know, I've, I've listened to black people who were raised in non-black communities who sound like, um, honestly, they sound like, well, uh, like trailer park type whites. I've heard that. I've heard blacks who pick up uh, white southern dialects and they sound like those people. Um, just because you're black, uh, you're not going to be born with a black, what is known as the black accent, which which is when people talk about this, they're usually talking about the black accent from the inner, inner cities. doesn't mean you're going to be born with that. So what happens is code switching becomes a thing. Uh, if you guys are new to my channel, um, I had a friend that told me that once he used to practice his Ebonics in the mirror when he was in middle school because he didn't want to be different. And, uh, you know, sadly that's the case, but the desire to fit in the group is so great that people will do whatever it takes to fit in. So what I want to say is, um, you know, basically the kids I want to I want to ask this question. Who who should really be ashamed? There's a reason why black parents move out of the inner city. Let's go over those reasons right now. The inner city is full of crime. Uh it's a good place for your daughters to get pregnant out of wedlock. Um uh, very good place because that's where a lot of it happens. Um Yeah, so <clears throat> uh, the inner city is 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 known for its violence, and it, it's known for for underfunded schools. So if you want your kids to not have a good shot in life, raise them in the inner city. So the, these are these are some of the reasons why they they black parents who come from the inner city will leave the inner city to, for the suburbs for safer communities. Uh, so their kids can have a chance. But some of the side effects of this are their kids will sound different. Um, look at, uh, you, you don't have to look any further than some of the, the rappers and their kids. Look at, I, I remember being shocked and how my eyes were opened when I listened to uh, the children of some rappers uh, who had been raised in privilege and outside of the inner city. They sounded just like the suburban kids, just like them. Didn't matter that their parents sounded like hardcore street thugs, okay, turned businessmen and, you know, whatever. It, did, it didn't matter that their parents sounded like that. What mattered was the fact that they were surrounded. They went to school with these kids. That's the real influence. Like, for instance, me. Let, listen to how I talk, right? Um... Uh, somebody, some people can say I, I may sound white. That's fine. I don't care. It doesn't really matter because at, at the end of the day, um, black people learned English from white people. At the end of the day, when you trace it back in history, we learned, and, and English is a white, is a European language. Okay. So we learned it from white people. Um, what you have in the inner city due to the underfunding and the lack of privilege and and the poverty, what you have is a form of English, which people will call Ebonics, will, will proudly call Ebonics. You have a form of English that, that is representative of, um, you, can, you can look at the grammar structure, you can look at 
the type of language that that's being used, and you can see where this English comes from a bad place. And this is, you know, because of the forces, the dynamic of the black community, because they represent the greater than the suburbs, the greater portion of the demographic, they feel they get to dictate uh, how the language should be spoken and how black people should be. And to a, to a large extent, this, uh, this really affects black kids. So they feel like they need to code switch. Now listen to Obama, President Obama former President Obama, um, not really a fan of all of his policies, but I think he represented black people well in how he spoke. Uh, some people say, I speak like Obama. Obama wasn't raised in some hood, okay? Uh, he's raised in Hawaii. Um, he was raised overseas for a time, too, in Indonesia. Uh, and he also lived in Chicago at one point. But he wasn't in somebody's hood. He worked in the hood. But... Obama has a very clear, distinguished um, accent, um, and he represented black people well. Now, had there been a black president who sounded like Ray Ray or Pookie, uh, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been interested in, in 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 having that person as a president or having a person having him represent Black America at all. And I don't think white America would have been interested in them either. So. It all depends on where you're raised. Now, who who should really be ashamed? Let me go back to that question. Should you, as a person from the suburbs, be ashamed that you speak properly? What's the now? Ask yourself this: What's the uh, what's the opposite of proper? Would it would it not be improper? So, you know what they call ebonics, in truth, in verity, is improper grammar we 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 take the, the the certain members of the african american community take pride in sounding ignorant they take pride and they say this is our heritage this is our legacy so why aren't you proud of being a slave then if that's your heritage and if that's your legacy why don't you take some pride in being a slave are you proud of that no, that's something we should be ashamed of. And we should want to, I, I don't even want to talk about it, to be honest, because we're so much better than that now. We've come such a long way. We've actually surpassed other groups who weren't in that type of slavery. Not only in our inventions and the things that we've done, but our accomplishments in terms of the music that we've created, the, the variety of music uh, outside of hip-hop. Forget about hip-hop just the variety of music and the variety of achievements in terms of inventions and things that are still being used in the modern world. We should be very proud of that. So we, sh we should take a, a more progressive stance. But the, those in the inner city want to hold on to the ignorance and those sorts of things. So uh, who should really be ashamed? Should you be ashamed? Should those who come from the inner city be ashamed? Yes. Should those who come from the suburbs be ashamed of the progression? Moving to the suburbs is progress. Raising your kids in the suburbs, going to better schools where they can learn how to speak properly is representative of progress. Okay. Um, so what I, what I want to do is I want to give a word of encouragement to these uh, black kids who and black adults who are still, you know, thinking about how they were raised, feeling ashamed for not sounding like other blacks who, who come from the inner city and who have a more popular black accent, um, more popular in terms of its numbers, really, and its association with hip-hop and comedy. You know, people will get on there and, and do a minstrel show in a heartbeat. Kevin Hart, lots of people do it. Steve Harvey, lots of black comedians will do it because it is funny. It's something we can laugh at, but when you think about it in truth, when you think about the origin of how people came to sound this way, it's sad. It's really not funny. It's really sad. It's unfortunate. What it is is it's the vestiges of slavery, the vestiges of Jim Crow. It's inequality uh, 
magnified and exemplified and 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 being shown and when people who other kids of other minorities who who are raised in in the suburbs whose parents have been able to give them a good education when they hear you talking like this it's distasteful it's they make fun of it and you should even though our black community comedians will make fun of it too they'll then code switch and sound this way so we have to learn to let go of the past and be progressive. Uh, we should develop. Um, I mean, there are developed uh, education, uh, educated uh, black accents or black sense, uh, how people would say it. There are very developed black accents for, for, for black intellectuals um, that sound apart from the street. We can't, we can't take a street accent and try to dress it up. And try to spice it up, and then say, "Hey, this is this is uh, how how we how educated black people sound." No, this is not how they sound. This is how black people who read a few books, who think they're educated, but haven't gotten over the streets, or who are still catering to the streets, quote unquote, fence riders. This is how they sound. So we don't want to sound like them. We want to develop our own accent, which is intelligent, which is well-spoken, and which is not representative of the street, because we don't represent the street. We're better than that. We're not from the street. The streets have done nothing for us but put us in jail, okay, to the tune of over one million black men in jail, in counting, um, cause, uh, the streets have caused uh, drug dealing, the streets have caused disproportionate amounts of uh disproportionate amounts of uh black uh unemployment due to discrimination to how people sound and how they represent themselves they're unemployable also uh disproportionate out of child out of uh wedlock childbearing to the tune of 70 something percent so um how you sound is important Back in the 80s, there was a, excuse me, in the 90s, there was a, there was a series of commercials run by Canon, and it, it had Andre Agassi, famous tennis player, and what he would say in the commercials was, image is everything. And of course, it was doublespeak talking about Canon, uh, the, uh, a camera company focusing on their image, but at the same time, who you are, image is everything. Your image as a company, your image as a brand is everything. Uh, the America is not a collectivist society. It's more individualistic, but there are pockets of collectivism, and where collectivism counts, where the group counts, is is in how you represent yourself. How a f how the majority represents themselves is how the majority of other groups see us. How do we want to be seen? Do we want to be seen as People who defer to the street and who use street dialects? Or do we want to be seen as people who are intelligent, who invent, and uh, who, who are progressive? Uh, or do we want to be seen as criminals and those who are associated with criminals? These are, these are what we have to, these are the choices we have to make. Um, a lot of black parents have made their choices. They're leaving the, the inner city. And they're they're seeking a better environment for black their black children to be raised. Uh, trust me, no one is moving to the inner city saying, "I want my kids to sound like criminals." No one is moving there saying that. No one wants that for their kids. No one wants that. There's some people who, for themselves, they may enjoy that, but when they think about their offspring, even the rappers. There was a rapper who recently, a young rapper who sounds like trash because of his environment, because of how he was raised. He sounds like a thug, but he wanted to, he got enough money to buy a house for his mother outside of the inner city. Okay. He didn't want to, he doesn't want to live there. He brought her outside because he wants safety. He wants the best for his mom and he realizes, but at the same time, these people will still bully, they'll bully. Uh, kids who come from the inner city, who don't sound, who come from the suburbs, excuse me, who don't sound like inner city uh, folks, 
they'll bully them uh, because of how they sound, but then they themselves don't want to live there. So I'll let you, I'll leave you with that thought. I'll let you think about that. This is Common Denominator.